Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. I am privileged today to be joined on the summit by the head men's basketball coach at Central Methodist, Coach Jeff Sherman. Coach, the Eagles, uh, it's been up and down in the, since the calendar has changed. 15-8 and eight right now overall, 6-6 six and six in heart play. Coming off a loss at Graceland, 72-55 a little bit earlier this week. And, and I know, Lamoni, that's a tough place to play, tough place to go in there and get a win. Uh, start us off right there. Talk about your most recent game. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, Joy, for for having you know our program on. Um, yeah, it was a it was not a, a high point of our of our season with Graceland. And a couple things about the game, you know, Graceland sitting at the bottom end of our conference. I think if if anything else, it's just going to show you just how strong our conference is. Um, uh, top to bottom, you have to show up every night. Uh, program has been struggling, uh, but that the Moni, they had a great crowd, very vibrant. Their team was pumped to play. I give them a lot of respect for what they were able to accomplish against what I think is a good team. I think we have a very strong team. We've, we've hit a snag, you know, the last few weeks with a number of reasons, but, uh, no excuses aside, Graceland just flat out outplayed us. And a tough road loss for us that's put us in a, in a spot where you have about 10 teams that are still very actively competing uh, for playoff spots, for home court uh, positions. Uh, so, um, you know, we're going to have to learn a little bit from that and move on. Coach, I want to talk about the heart here in just a moment, but uh, your team, it, it looks to be a, a younger team, and and one of the leaders on that team, a sophomore, Jonathan Brown, uh, he's putting in a lot of time for you, definitely getting a lot of court time. Another night in which he did that, 35 minutes on the court, led the team with 13 points against Graceland and, and leading the way for you, averaging 18-plus points a game. Yeah, Jonathan's a special player. I, I think he's one of the most talented athletes. Uh, in the NEI. Now, of course, you could debate, okay, we're talking about basketball, but athletically, he's 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 very good. He's got about a 40-inch vertical. He's <laughs> very explosive. Uh, but, you know, when we talk about the years of playing, it seems like here this year, it's going to be that way for a couple of years. And you know this after talking with a number of coaches, you know, freshmen aren't really freshmen this year, you know, and seniors are even more experienced seniors. But no, we don't have a, a real experienced team. And, and Jonathan may only be a sophomore, but I think he's graduating this year. You know, so it's, it's a, you know, there a lot of players are a little bit more experienced than what their year's probably showing. He is and has been a leader for us. Uh, first semester, I really felt that he was probably a, as good as anybody. Uh, but I think one of the things that's really changed in college basketball is the, the ability to defend. And I think uh, teams have uh, figured out ways you don't uh, let him get to the basket. <laughs> I think he attacks the basket about as well as anybody. Um, he's a very strong, powerful athlete. And, and, and with that, he's been just a very good leader. Um, we as a program um, haven't been as consistent as I think you have to be if you want to be at the top. But um, he's from London. Uh, comes from overseas. Uh, he's, he's just having an amazing year. We, we brought him in at semester last year, uh, and he helped uh, get our program turned around a little bit. So, um, uh, yeah, he's he's having a very good year, and I would consider him one of the best in our league. Coach, and I understand what you're saying about even the experience and all that, and especially with COVID in the last couple of years, players that are listed, sophomores or juniors or whatever, I think you just almost have to just – take those names away for the next year or two longer and put however many years they've, they've been with the program or how many years experience they have. And they're getting more and more, it seems, but you do have a couple of players that are listed as seniors and they seem to be doing well for you as well. Tim Cameron uh, the other night had nine points, uh, eight assists, uh, eight rebounds and assists, three steals. A I mean, he just filled up a stat line for you uh, against Graceland and Fody Kamara, another senior and, and looking at his numbers, he's averaging nearly a double, double 10.5 and, and 9.1. But it, that seems to be the production that you get from him night in and night out a couple nights ago 15 points 15 boards uh, Wednesday night seven points seven boards I mean it just seems to be consistent across the board 
Well, Joe, you're, you're correct there. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about Fody first. Uh, Fody came in last year as a senior. So, you know, he was going to finish his career, and we had recruited him <clears throat> from junior college, and and he, and he wasn't happy at his previous school, which was at Pikeville. And so he came here last year and had the same type of year he's having now. He, he was among the top rebounders in the league, uh, consistently averaged about 10 points a game. And then he graduated. Uh, we really did not know we were going to have Fody back. Um, uh, he wanted to go to grad school. We did not offer grad school scholarships. Um, and it wasn't until about a week or two before school started that our university decided that anybody that was returning from Central Methodist could stay on and go to grad school. <laughs> and so that allowed him uh, an opportunity to come back. So uh, fortunately, that's helped us because he's been very, he's just very consistent. He's one of the best rebounders I've had. He always has this knack of being around the, the ball. He loves going after rebounds. I wish we had everybody that would, that would like to, <laughs> uh, to do that. He's a good teammate. Uh, he works hard every day. Um, these two that you just mentioned, we have to have on the floor at all times. And part of the reason we had been struggling these last two weeks is they both uh, missed about four games, three, four games due to the COVID. So we had to navigate around having that consistent guy that was giving us 10 and, and 10 rebounds. He had, he had 15 points and 15 rebounds the game before last night. I, I believe it was up at Clark university on the road mm -hmm. and that's big time. And that was one of his you know first games, you know, back after, after sitting out. So he's he's been doing very well. And again, he's a senior, two-year senior, but it's only a second year with us. Uh, the other gentleman you mentioned it has been the I, in my opinion, the difference maker of us of our season from last year, a complete turnaround. Uh, he's had an amazing basketball background. He's played at a couple of Division I schools. He was an honorable mention All-American at Loyola University, uh, in a, who's one of the top NEI programs right now. And so he's he's now finishing up uh, a second uh, senior season. Um, he's had a triple double uh, this year for us, which I've been fortunate enough over my you know 37 years. I've had uh, a handful of players that have had triple doubles, but it's very rare. And uh, it's getting tougher and tougher with with the amount of talent and, and teams that are getting out there. And so, but but what he does is he brings a, a six foot four body, strong body, at the point guard position. And in my opinion, he's the best defender in our conference, one of the best defenders in the country. So you're able to to put out somebody that's very big, very strong, very athletic that can get up there and kind of really dictate our defense, which I really think is the strength of our program by far. I, I would consider us one of the best in the country defensively. Uh, we do have some challenges lately, especially scoring. But Tim has been our leader. Uh, he's our vocal leader. And only having him one year is tough. You know, it's taken him a while to learn our system. And he really had things up and going until, boom, we had to have all this uh, step back a little bit. Let's get some time. You know, the COVID protocols uh, slowed us down. And uh, But we're back. Uh, he's back to, to full strength. So we're, we're, we're getting more excited about here. There are final uh, seven games of the season. But th those three players that you mentioned have been a huge part of our success thus far this year. We're speaking now with Jeff Sherman, who's the head men's basketball coach for Central Methodist and has been for quite a while, 37 years. Coach, you just picked up win number 661. So that's a, a nice, you know, push on towards 700 or, uh, you know, one, one win at a time. We'll, we'll, we'll get you there in time, I'm sure. But uh, this is a career though, that spanned five decades. Now you've coached into five decades and, and at one school, talk about that and, and what something like that means. Well, obviously, I'm very fortunate and blessed to one and get the opportunity to do this and to do it this long at a at a university that's been very uh, special and dear to my heart. I mean, I also attended uh, Central. I played for uh, a Hall of Fame coach, Ken Ash, got a chance to come back and work for him uh, for a year before he moved on and took another job. And the president and athletic director at the time 
Here I am, 24 years old, Joey. And uh, they had enough trust and faith in uh, letting me get my start. Uh, I come from a basketball coaching family. My father, uh, growing up in Colorado, my, he coached high school for close to 30 years. So this is something that I've always wanted to do. But coaching college was not something that was right there on the radar screen right off the bat. So I was thrown right into it and uh, been very fortunate. It's, it's hard to explain. But I've had both sons that have attended Central. Mm -hmm. My wife also works here at Central Methodist. She's the VP of finance. So it's been a it's a home for us. Uh, I'm very privileged to get the opportunity to represent the university uh, with the basketball program. But it's um, I guess it goes more than that. We've always kind of viewed success. And I think sometimes coaching is you you work every day to try to improve yourself. You know, you, you work to improve your teammates. And also that goes on to helping um, improve, you know, university, your community. And we, we've taken that approach and it, it just gets to be more, more than yourself. You know, uh, we're, we're almost in a society anymore. It's always you're always thinking about yourself, what's best for you, you. But, you know, in our program, we're always trying to help our teammates also get better, help our athletic department, uh, university get better. So both my sons attended here, and I've had the privilege of coaching my oldest son, who was a two-time All-American, helped us win the conference title uh, one of the years and in a couple of national tournaments. And I've just been so blessed to have him as my associate head coach for the past seven years. He really is what kind of makes his program uh, tick, uh, to be honest with you. So, no, I, I can't have any complaints. I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to do what I do. I've heard you mention Hall of Fame coaches a couple of times, and I want to make sure that the audience listening now knows you're a Hall of Fame coach as well in your own right. So I uh, definitely wanted to make sure that was talked about. You, you talked earlier about the conference and Heart of America Conference right now. Number one team in the country, William Penn. Number one team in the country out of the heart. The interesting thing about that, you look down the rest of the top 25, you don't find another heart team in there. And I think it goes back to what you said. You guys are beating each other up night in and night out. I will also point out too, but there is one blemish on the William Penn schedule this year. They're 20 and one and 11 and one in hard play. And that blemish is a 79, 73 victory at the hands of central Methodist. So coach, it's a tough conference. Well, uh, first of all, William Penn right now de deserves to be number one. Um, what a phenomenal program and coach Henry, what he's done there, not only this year, but, uh, Last five, six years, they've been a part of the Heart of America Conference. A couple of things about just what you were saying. You hit everything just perfectly. We are beating each other up in our conference. No, we don't have another team in our conference that's in the top 25, mostly because of the overall record. Um, we have a number of teams that are as good as anybody in the top 25. But uh, we don't get to really show that. And I think what makes, in my opinion, William Penn so special right now is they're able to do what the rest of us haven't been able to do. Finding ways to win. Uh, you don't always play well. The games aren't always all pretty. They've won a number of games on last second shots, come from behind. So it's not a typical, they're just dominating everybody. They're just finding ways to win. And for about 10 teams, if you look at the number two team in our conference, which right now might be Evangel, I believe, one game separates them, one or two games separates them, all, go all the way down to number 10. So our last final seven games of the Heart of America race, we have a 14-team conference. You're going to see a handful of teams that might change their position in conference from like a sixth place one night and after one game might jump up for a tie for third. <laughs> and it's going to do that all the way until the end of the season. And every one of these teams are good, they're talented, they're well coached. And it's just going to be the ones that's going to be able to find consistency and maybe that little edge, whatever it might be, to get them up to the to the to that level where you can get host maybe a home court in the playoffs. Cause in the heart of America, the, the top four teams get to host. We don't have a neutral site. So the reward for having that good regular season in conferences those top teams get to host the first round game and it always goes to that higher seed 
Every mm -hmm. conference does things a little different. So it's even tougher then for someone to knock off a William Penn because they're going to get to host, you know, all those all those games. Boy, are they a tough team to beat on their home floor. But I think most everybody is. And, and that's the beauty of this conference. Uh, you have to show up each and every night, and it just brings out the best in you. And I think that's, as a coach, what you want. You want to you want to be the best you could possibly be. You want to play the best teams, and that's naturally given to you when you had the conference <laughs> schedule. Well, you mentioned seven games remaining, so, Coach, that's what you're looking at. You next host Peru State on Saturday and then six more games following that. However, you close out the season. You talked about the home court advantage. Well, it'll work in your favor this year with the schedule, those final three games all at home, closing things out with Missouri Valley for Senior Day. Yeah, I, I think if you look at the schedule and you compare it, I'll be honest, I've spent a little bit of time analyzing everybody's schedule. <laughs> and you should. Trying to figure out <laughs> ways that you might have an advantage. Bottom line is you have to show up, play whatever team you have coming up next. That's all we really talk about. But out of the seven games that we have left, five of them are home. Uh, you hope that that's going to make a difference. We are, we've are we been actually a better road team up until just of late uh, than we have been at home. Our two road games are against two teams that have beaten us at home, which would be Benedictine and Evangel, and they're both you know, a game uh, up ahead of us. So I, I do think there's going to be a lot of challenges, you know, for us to navigate through this schedule, get our players back in line. And again, we're healthy now. Uh, you know, I, I go with the, the old legendary coach, Don Meyer. I learned this from decades ago. There's no whining, there's no complaining, and there's no excuses. And, um, we had an amazing start to our season. You know, we got to go play at BYU University. You got to figure it, NEI institution, going out to Provo, Utah, and playing in front of 15,000 fans, and we played well. We competed. Uh, we had a lot of things going for us first semester. We beat William Penn, like you mentioned. Uh, I really felt that the, our team is talented enough to be on that big stage. But as we came back in January, like many teams did, you have the, the COVID issue and you start to miss three starters for two, three, four games. And then you start taking a step down on in the standings. Um, it sometimes does a little bit to your confidence because you want to gain that consistency. And that consistency we just haven't had. So following our loss earlier uh, this week, we must get ourselves back. We don't have a lot of time. But we have all the tools in line to make that a, a possibility. And, and again, this is one of the challenges that I think makes coaching a lot of fun. And I think your best teams are player-led. So the players that you had mentioned earlier, along with a host of other talented players that we have, hopefully that that takes place and we can find ourselves back up there towards the, the, the upper end in the heart of America comes uh, conference season end. It should be a fun end to this season. I think it's been a, a fun year already, I, especially all, getting to play all these games. It's been a couple of years since since we've seen something resembling normalcy, and it's it's been enjoyable to watch. Coach Jeff Sherman, thank you so much for taking time with us today. It has been a true privilege to get to visit with you and listen and learn, and, and I hope that you'll come back and visit with us again. And success to the Eagles, then, as you wrap up the regular season and find a position in the postseason and, and for you all, hopefully at home. Well, thank you, Joey. And, you know, I and many others obviously appreciate what Midwest sports net is, is doing for small programs and uh, publicity and all that type of stuff. So we sure do thank you for allowing this, allowing us this opportunity to talk about our program. That means a lot. Thank you, sir.